Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Yep, yep, hi, howdy folks, how y'all doing out there? It is Monday evening once again, March, uh, April 27, 2020. This is the Grim Leftover Show. I am Grimner, and it is live right now if you're tuned in at this proper time right here on com. If you're listening on a podcast, how you doing out there? Welcome. Good to have you with us. Anyway, let me say hi and howdy to the various uh, folks out there in the various places you might be uh, tuned in from. Um, that would be right here on com or on RLM Radio. Dot .xyz, possibly freedomsnetwork.com, or realliberty.org. Uh, tune in. All these places. We're, we're in various places out there. So howdy, hi, and welcome to y'all. If you're not here in the chat, come on over to the chat. we got a nice group of folks here today. We always get some good folks over here. Yes, indeed. we got Rob. we got Christine. we got Vinny, Mr. Vinny, Hansel, J. Dredd there. Uh, I know Moose Girl was in here chatting earlier. I don't get to see because I just had to reboot. There's Donna. Donna Dan Van Meter, <laughs> and I think Kate's around somewhere, Frumpy, um, Meisterbrow maybe, Prince, I, I don't know who all's tuned in, Cowboy Check, you there? Hey, Cowboy! All right, uh, so uh, welcome to everybody, and I uh, hope you're doing fine in your home imprisonment. How is your home imprisonment going, by the way? Are you enjoying your home imprisonment? That's really what I want to know. <laughs> Oh, God. Anyway, so this morning, well, for a while, I guess, but this morning it kind of hit me, it struck me um, about certain situations that have gone on in the history of uh, our planet, our country, other countries uh, out there. Um, and, and and I decided, well, let me let me see what kind of parallels I can draw. Anyway, I'm going to give you, a, first off, the little bit that I wrote on uh, the blog post for today. Um, and, and then, uh, by the way, this is episode 69, everybody. 69! You got that? Right. Uh, <laughs> of the Grim Leftovers. All right. So uh, anyway, here's what I here's what I wrote, which you'll be reading later on in the in the in the blog post if you decide to go and read the blog post. So I, I say it, I said, I decided to go a different way for today's show. I've been watching all of the events going on that are being blamed on the supposed coronavirus and doing my best to connect the dots between the overhyped health emergency and the imposition of the totalitarian military surveillance state. We, of course, are being told that they are doing this to... Uh, protect us all. Oh, yes, that's right. Which, of course, is total nonsense. Anyway, I noticed many similarities between what is going on here in the U.S. of A. and in many other places around the world. And what I know, what I know, or what little I know, I guess I should say, of the events that led to the destruction of the Weimar Republic. In this show, podcast, I try to draw some parallels to make it more clear, at least in my own mind. I call this the uh, Weimarization of the United States. Hope you find this show helpful and informative, even though it's mostly just my opinion. Yes, the Weimarization of the United States. Are you all familiar with Weimar, the Weimar Republic that happened over there in Germany? Well, I, I picked for you. Uh, a mainstream outlet thing <laughs> to share with you from history.com. History.com, which is like the History Channel. Uh, and this is the, the, their write-up from uh, December 2017 uh, and updated on April 2019 of the Weimar Republic. So hopefully you're all familiar somewhat with the Weimar Republic, but if not, this will give you a, a brief view into that time of the world. <laughs> so, the Weimar Republic was Germany's government from 1919 to 1933. 
the period after World War I until the rise of Nazi Germany. It was named after the town of Weimar, where, the, where Germany's new government was formed by a national assembly after Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated from its uncertain beginnings to a brief season of success and then to a devastating depression, the Weimar Republic experienced enough chaos to position Germany for the rise of Adolf Hitler and the Nazi Party. Germany, after World War I, uh, Germany did not fare well after World War I, as it was thrown into troubling economic and social disorder. Now, just try and think of what the various governments around the world, specifically the United States government, what they're doing right now and blaming this corona stuff on it. They, they, this is basically a world war at this point. They're considering it a world war or an event that they can use in place of a world war. Okay? <laughs> so, um, after a series of mutinies by German soldiers and uh, German sailors and soldiers, Kaiser Wilhelm II lost his, the support of his military and the German people, and he was forced to abdicate November 9, 1918. Do you think maybe they're looking into replacing the current leader here because he may lose support not necessarily of the military but of the uh well, well the various others that that are going on out there the following day a provisional government was announced so if they announced a provisional government the very next day it was obviously well planned out ahead of time you don't just automatically say well, that guy's gone. Well, let's let's announce a new government, which this this government was made up of members of the Social Democratic Party, the SDP, and the Independent Social Democratic Party of Germany, the USDP, shifting power from the military. They never really want the military to have power, uh, which is understandable. The military is not really good with people. Uh, in December 1918, elections were held for, the Nash, for a National Assembly tasked with creating a new parliamentary constitution. On February 6, 1919, the National Assembly met in the town of Weimar and formed the Weimar Coalition. They also selected SDP leader Friedrich Ebert as president of the Weimar Republic. Just picked the guy, selected him. He's the guy. Y'all got really no say in the matter. Look forward to that coming your way, too, by the way. Think about it. On June 28th, the Treaty of Versailles was signed, which ordered Germany to reduce its military to take responsibility for World War I, relinquish some of its territory, and pay exorbitant reparations to the Allies. It also prevented Germany from joining the League of Nations at that time, which should have been a boon to them. However, it wasn't a boon to them. <laughs> because, well, they wanted a lot. And in order for them to do international trade, they needed to be in the League of Nations at that time. So, yeah. All right. So, the Weimar Constitution. That's right. Weimar had a constitution. Huh. August 11th, 1919, the Weimar Constitution was signed into law by President Ebert. The law faced venomous opposition from the military, which of course was being greatly reduced, and the radical left. See, they had radical left all the way back then. Radical left. The Constitution contained 181 articles and covered everything from the structure of the German state, the Reich, and the rights of the German people to religious freedom and how laws should be enacted. The Weimar Constitution included these highlights. The German Reich is a republic. Now, I see and hear, and I probably myself in the past have stated, hey, we're not a democracy. 
were a republic. So was so was Weimar. So was Germany. They were a republic. Just put that into your head, let it sit there and percolate a little bit and think about the word republic and what that really means to you. <laughs> Representatives of the people must be elected equally every four years by all men and women over age of 20. The term of the president, seven years. All orders of the president must be endorsed by the chancellor or Reich minister. Then we get to this one. Article 48. Remember that. Article 48 allows the president to suspend civil rights and operate, operate independently in an emergency. Article 48 allows the president <laughs> to suspend civil rights and operate independently in an emergency. Two legislative bodies, the Reichstag and the Reichsrat, were formed to represent the government people. All Germans are equal and have the same civil rights and responsibilities. All Germans have the right to freedom of expression. All Germans have the right to peaceful assembly. All Germans have the uh, right to freedom of religion. There is no state church. So those three there... Uh, minus the freedom of the press, because it's not listed here, um, are to basically be considered the First Amendment of your Constitution. State-run public education as free and mandatory for children. Why were they going to see in 20 years? State-run public education is free and mandatory for children. Oh, yeah. Vinny in the chat here said, see you in 20 years, is what the Germans said at the signing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it was, didn't quite last 20 years, I don't think. All right. Um, all Germans have the right of private property. That's a big one. All Germans have the right to equal opportunity and earnings in the workplace. I don't really know what that means. Equal opportunity, I suppose I can understand, but equal earnings, eee, not so much. Then comes the hyperinflation, and the fallout. Despite its new constitution, the Weimar Republic faced one of Germany's greatest economic challenges, hyperinflation. Thanks to the Treaty of Versailles, Germany's ability to produce revenue, uh, revenue generating coal and iron ore, decreased, decreased. As war debts and reparations drained its coffers, the German government was unable to pay its debts. Some of the former World War I allies did not buy Germany's claim that it couldn't afford to pay. In a blatant League of Nations breach, French and Belgian troops occupied Germany's main industrial area. The Ruhr determined to get their reparation payments. Or else. The Weimar government ordered German workers to passively resist occupation and go on strike, shutting down the coal mines and iron factories. As a result, Germany's economy quickly tanked. So they shut down the means of production and their economy tanked. Line drawn. Line drawn. From there to now. In response, the Weimar government simply printed more money. Another line drawn from then to now. The effort backfired, however, and further devalued the German mark. And inflation increased at an astounding level. The cost of living rose rapidly and many people lost all they had. That's still to come here, folks, but... Uh, if you can see the the German government, after the war, deciding to do certain things in certain ways, and then went ahead and said, well, we want to shut down the means of production, which will shut down the economy, and we'll just go ahead and print as much money as we need. Got that? Makes sense? 
Following? <laughs> All right. <laughs> According to the book Paper Money, written by George J.W. Goodman, under the pseudonym Adam Smith, heard of him? Uh, the la the law-abiding country crumbled into petty thievery. An underground bartering economy was established to help people meet their basic needs. That is also still to come. We we can look forward to that. Everything lost, money worthless, an underground bartering economy will be established, and people will be able to eat and put food on their tables uh, because the U.S. government is doing the same thing. Yes, Money World, Adam Smith. <laughs> uh, yeah, paper money. Uh, it, it was the uh, thing that, uh, the paper that he wrote. All right. The Dawes Plan. Germany elected Gustav Stresemann as the new chancellor in 1923 he ordered rural workers back to the factories. He ordered workers back to the factories and replaced the mark with a new currency, the American-backed Rettenmark. Rettenmark. Yeah, the crash was no mystery. <laughs> well, we'll get to we'll get to that in a moment, uh, Vinny, the, the twenty nine thing. But uh, in late 1923, the League of Nations asked U.S. banker and director of budget Charles Dawes to help tackle Germans repara Germany's reparations and hyperinflation issues. He submitted the Dawes Plan, which outlined a plan for Germany to pay more reasonable reparations on a sliding scale. Dawes was later awarded the now meaningless Nobel Peace Prize for his efforts. It may have been meaningless back then, too. I, I don't know. But it's certainly the Nobel Peace Prize is absolutely meaningless at this point in time. The Dawes plan and Stresemann's leadership helped to stabilize Weimar Republic and energize the economy. In addition, Germany repaired relations with France and Belgium and was finally allowed into the League of Nations, which opened a door for international trade. In general, life improved after many years in the Weimar Republic after the destruction wrought by government policies, which we're seeing now here, live and in person. <laughs> Not everybody gets to experience this stuff. Consider yourself lucky. <laughs> the Great Depression. Much of Weimar's Republic's recovery was due to a steady flow of American dollars into its economy. But unbeknownst to Germany, America had positioned itself for an economic disaster of its own as it struggled with increased unemployment, low wages, declining stock values, and massive unliquidated bank loans. Massive unliquidated bank loans. Where's the United States getting all this money? Oh, the Fed's printing it. Those are what? Bank loans. <laughs> On October 29, 1929, the United States stock market crashed crashed, sending America into a devastating economic meltdown and ushering in the Great Depression. The stock market crash had a global ripple effect. It was especially devastating for the new, newly recovered Weimar Republic. As the flow of American money dried up, Germany could no longer meet their financial responsibilities. Businesses failed, unemployment I think he meant employment, plummeted again, and uh, Germany faced another devastating economic crisis. And then we get to Article 48. Article 48. Remember that from earlier? Article 48. During hyperinflation, the German middle class bore the brunt of economic chaos. When another financial crisis hit, they grew weary and distrustful of their government leaders. Searching for new leadership and fearing a communist takeover, many people turned to extremist parties, 
such as the Nazi Party, led by Adolf Hitler, despite his unpopular and failed attempt to start a national revolution in 1923. He tried to start it right when they were forming the other government, or right when the uh, other guy came in. In 1932, the Nazi Party became the largest political party in Parliament after a brief struggle for power. Hitler was named Chancellor in January 1933. Within weeks, within weeks, he invoked Article 48 of the Weimar Constitution to quash many civil rights and suppress members of the Communist Party. In March 1933, Hitler introduced the Enabling Act to allow him to pass laws without the approval of any damn parliament. We don't need that. We don't need the president. I'm the chancellor. I'm in charge. I'm running the show. And your rights are gone. You have no rights that I have not granted you specifically. To make sure the Enabling Act was passed, Hitler forcibly, force, forcibly prevented Communist Parliament members from voting. Once it became a law, Hitler was free to legislate as he saw fit establishing his dictatorship without any checks or balances. Now, they've got a bunch of citations here uh, to various articles and things um, that you may be of interest to. But if you go back to, to some of this stuff, I am South Park. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're a sour. You will respect my authority. <laughs> so just remember, when they put in their constitution, when they started the, the new Weimar Republic, they put it included in it. Article 48, allowing the president to suspend civil rights and operate independently in emergency. As soon as Hitler got into power, two, two weeks in, he invoked Article 48 on the people and eliminated tons of, tons of rights and then created a new law by himself, for himself, that he could pass any laws he wanted and prevented the party he didn't like in the parliament there from being able to vote. All of this, is any of this making sense to y'all? Is this clicking a little bit? Is it, is, are you seeing parallel lines from then to now? And I know, we didn't just get out of a world war. We're in the middle of one right now. It's this corona crap. This is what they're considering a war. They Never before in the history of this planet has all of the governments of the world gone in lockstep and forced everybody to stay in their homes for a long period of time. Shut down all businesses except the ones they deem essential, which are the big corporate conglomerates and all your private little businesses Screw you, and your businesses will not be able to survive to the end of this stuff. Now, I understand some places are trying to open, and some are opening a little bit. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to say that the vast majority of private small businesses are not going to survive this nonsense. And I, I don't care what kind of loans or whatever they're getting, and as as you all know, they're printing money as if it's going out of style, and it just might be. It just might be. Now, I if anybody wants to make any comments on this, other than in the chat there, um, I, I do. I am opening my wire right now, uh, so you can feel free to uh, call in on that and, and and make any 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 statements you like to make here. Uh, but but this stuff, this stuff that's going on, uh, if if you're not seeing at least some esoteric uh, connections, but between then and now, um, I, it 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 <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I, it, to me, it, it's 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 plainly obvious. It's as obvious as the nose on your face of the stuff that's going on. Um, <laughs> No, Frumpy, you, you, 
if you want to make a comment to me in the chat, feel free. I, I, I mean, I, I just got kind of got hung up on this thing uh, over the last little while here, and, uh, and 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 I had to go. I mean, I don't know that much about the German history. I don't know much about World War One, even World War Two. Uh, I, I and I, I knew about the Weimar hyperinflation. I knew that the, they were. Uh, doing some things that were trying to improve stuff until it didn't until the United States fell flat on its face and 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 brought about all, all the rest of their problems. I knew that they had an underground bartering economy going on there, as all countries uh, that wind up destroying their own country via their currencies do. And and so I'm saying you you definitely have to look forward and expect a bartering economy coming your way because uh, as Rome says die dollar die uh, and it is this is definitely the biggest crime ever imposed on mankind imposed on all the I don't know about all the nations but the majority of the large nations the industrialized nations the developed nations and many of the third world nations as well. Are having to to suffer through this, uh, and I, what's going to come of it? I don't know. Um, oh yeah, we get a, a page. Uh, we'll, we'll get we'll get a chapter. Uh, Frumpy says we'll get a page in the history book, but yeah, we'll get we'll get at least a chapter. we will probably get several books, um, that, but they won't be in the official history books. Uh, there'll be a chapter in the official history book telling the government side of the story, but there'll be a lot of books. Um, uh, coming out about this stuff, and I, I mean, how I think of how quickly they decided to go into lockdown globally around the world. Something that's never been done, uh, regardless of the various pandemics. I mean, you could just go back to 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 the the Zika or the monkeypox. I, I don't know what well, all the various other ones. Uh, the, these viruses have come along and they've been every few years and uh back in like 2015 i think it was one of those bird flus uh and they didn't shut the government down a lot more people died then than are dying now uh, a lot more people caught that that are catching this i i think i think i think what we're seeing here is a restructuring of the planet. Uh, they've been looking at it, looking to do it for a long time. And will the United States still be at the top of the heap uh, militarily, industrially, financially, uh, when, when this all flushes out? I, I don't think so. Uh, it, they may, the United States may uh, still do that, but, I mean, if you look at the fact that uh, most of the United States' manufacturing capability has been shipped overseas for the last 30 years, 40 years, uh, because, well, uh, there was big, greedy corporate mongers uh, that said, well, we can make a few more cents if we build it over there and ship it over here, and we can do it, you know, in any way we want. So since we, the United States, not me, but y'all, <laughs> no longer has really the industrial base needed. I mean, there's no steel being produced here. Uh, most electronics are not built here. Um, uh, Frumpy thinks the United Nations will be top of the mountain. And they may be the global controller. But uh, as far as who comes out as the rich nation or not, it could be China. China could be the winner here on this. They have the capability. Uh, they, they certainly have the... Uh, the people to to do it, and and the United States does not. So um, we'll, we'll see how this goes. I, I just I, I see so many direct connections. Uh, not, maybe not direct, but correlatable connections um, from from what happened back then to what's happening now. Um, And, yeah, I mean, I, there, there's no real exit strategy. 
you know, oh, we're going to roll this out in stages. We're going to give you a little bit of business here and a little bit of business there. Meanwhile, all the businesses they're not giving you, they're, they're, they're either already gone under or going under. All the people that worked for them, all the talents and skills they had being wasted. Uh, so th this is, I, and what, what can we, how can we, you and I here stop this? I don't know. Um, I, I know people have been going out and protesting and uh, making noise, but has that done anything? Have the, has the government relented? Have they said, all right, we're just going to bow to your, your request to open everything up? No, they haven't. Uh, and it's because of th their political fear. They're afraid if they do anything and somebody dies, which, of course, people are going to die, um, uh, then they're going to look like this horrible monster and they will be drummed out of the thing, <laughs> which I'm sure... Some of them exactly want that, uh, uh, want, want others to be the first one to step up and do that. Now, today here in New Mexico, the uh, town, the city of Grant, New Mexico, the mayor there said, uh, we're allowing anybody that wants to open up their business, open their business. Now, they didn't really get a lot of takers uh, on that list, um, but they, uh, as far as I know, some people went and, and did that. And the governor of New Mexico um while I understand she's not happy about that and says they can't do that and says that that, 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 that mayor of that city may be in big trouble uh, legally. <laughs> they, she didn't say, hasn't sent the troops in yet. So uh, any, anyway, um, here's the link to that. I, I got some other stories I put up here to talk about briefly. Um, so we'll do those. Okay. <coughs> Kronikoff. All right. <laughs> if anybody else has more comments on this and wants to draw any additional parallels, just let me know in the chat and I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. Uh, it, Vinny, Vinny says good stuff. Thank you, Vinny. Um, I, I, I just, you know, things happen in cycles. And uh, so, here we go. All right, this next article comes up on shtfplan.com, or shithitsthefanplan.com, by Max Slavo. And I hope this is true. After brainwashing people for decades, MSM and governments are losing control of people. <laughs> Not unless somebody's got a hold of my nuts, man. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so the mainstream media and government are losing control of people all over the globe. Humans are finally standing up for their rights to live not as slaves. A little odd phrasing, but I get it. But as sovereign people capable of making their own decisions without rulers and elitists calling the shots. Never before have we seen global tyranny at this scale, but never before have we seen a mass uprising against governments and their propaganda outlets, the CLAP, the corporate lay mass propaganda, the mainstream media, they call it, either. As more and more people get off their knees and stand up for their basic human rights to live freely, governments and the elitists, or those wannabe elitists, that control them, Lose power. We are at that point where power will return to the people and the elitists will be the ones living in fear. All we have to do is be free. What? All we have to do is be free. Let's see if he explains that. Wait a minute. How do you do that? <laughs> The mainstream media is going to continue its smear campaign against anyone who dares to believe that they have the right to live freely so long as they aren't harming others and take life's risks upon themselves. It's my risk to take if I want to, and I'm not hurting nobody. But as fewer people tune in 
to listen to their propaganda, fewer people will be brainwashed by it. A lot of people have lost everything in the tyrannical, liberty-crushing demands put upon them. And now that they have nothing to lose, they are finally realizing their rights do not come from the government or the elitists. And no smear campaign by government lapdogs will stop people, let's hope, from waking up at this point. The media has been enslaving our minds so the government won't have to enslave our bodies. But it's out now and in broad daylight, and the people have had enough. Again, I really hope so. The veil has been lifted. It has. Whether or not people will see that remains to be seen. People are realizing that we own ourselves. We own ourselves. Every individual out there owns themselves. And we are finally standing together, standing together, to let the masters know that we are not their slaves. The quote, in the movie, A Bug's Life can be applied today with a simple change of words. This is not about food. It's about keeping those ants in line. We all know at this point, it's not about health. It's about keeping those people in line. They have a clip of the film here in, the, in this post. Take notice of the clips in this movie on YouTube. The comments have been disabled, not by those posting the videos, but by YouTube. It's just another means to keep the people in line. They censor us, they brainwash us, and they expect us to obey blindly their commands, stay as their slaves, but the people have had enough. I hope so. Mass civil, civil disobedience where people are going to cease to obey laws that control them is already happening. Governors who locked people in their homes and bark commands that some close their businesses will lose the power to dictate once enough people disobey. And that day is coming. Let's hope so. This horrific cycle of violence and slavery is ending, and it's panicking those who have had control of us for so long. You can read it in the headlines. Fear the second wave. Anti-government extremists. We can't reopen or people will die. Well, guess what? You don't frickin' own us. You and your fear-mongering is falling on deaf ears. Free platforms are rising up during the mass censorship and fear-mongering uh, propaganda pushing. He's got another video in here from something else. Freedom Platform. Humanity is finally moving in the right direction. The last step is to just live. Protesting is begging the master to let you be free. And, of course, the master is never going to do that. <laughs> I don't I don't know that answer, <laughs> Sock. That's that's between you and her. Um <laughs> That's something you gotta have to work at between yourselves. <laughs> so what do you do? You just live free. You don't ask permission. Conduct your life as the free, the sovereign human being that you were born as. And let the ruling class panic. If you don't buy their fear, they can't control you. The fact that humans are finally realizing they've had this power all along is incredible. Live your life your way. Live your life your way. That's the biggest middle finger we can give to any tyrant, whether it be a cop, a governor, a politician, an elitist, or anyone else who wants our compliance and enslavement. Freedom is not negotiable, and the rights are not gifts from governments or others. 
We all have the basic human right to be free and live our lives the way we see fit. As more people realize this, our power grows and the mainstream media's fear campaign fails. After all, if there are no order followers, there are no orders. It's about time that we all stand together and abolish the last shred of modern-day slavery. I will not sit back and allow anyone to continue life as a slave if I can help it. I might not be able to do much, but I can promote peace, liberty, and the abolishment of all forms of slavery. Some say the pen is mightier than the sword. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But I'm tired of being told I have to give up my rights to live free for a false sense of security. I will no longer be owned or commanded. This is my life. I am peacefully choosing to be free. Thanks, Mac. Mac Slavo, shit hits the fan plan. SHTFplan.com. All right. <laughs> but speaking of uh, public servants, I guess, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know how to... How to <laughs> All right, it's on the gatewaypundit.com. This is true. This is real. This is the way they think, the statists think. So those that are living in fear, those that are living in total control, those that are totally brainwashed, this is how they think and how they feel. New Jersey public school teacher caught on camera telling students she hopes they die from coronavirus for playing outside. Some students were playing outside. And the teacher wants them to die. <laughs> you couldn't make it up. The math teacher at Steinhardt High School in New Jersey was caught on camera telling students who were playing football in a park that they should die a long, painful death from coronavirus. A long, painful death. The woman in the video, Nicole Griggs, has been a teacher in the dis district for 15 years. One of the students that, un the, that the unhinged teacher confronted and told the Trentonian that they were playing football on Thursday at the former Homedale School when the incident took place. They captured video of her confrontation and posted it to Snapchat and TikTok with the caption, Y'all, Miss Griggs is losing her damn mind if this is how the fuck she, uh, uh, she is a teacher. Coronavirus. Hashtag coronavirus. Griggs began by warning them they could get in trouble for being out, but she became more aggressive as the kids told her, uh, that she doesn't care if the meltdown is posted online. Uh, parks, parks closed. The whole area, Griggs said. Get it through your sick head. You're the reason we're in this situation. What? Those kids out there playing football is the reason you're all in this situation? <laughs> you are the problem, not the solution. Go ahead. Keep recording. Who are you going to show it to? Post me on social media. You're the idiot doing the wrong thing. So brainwashed, it's not even funny. I'm just trying to save your ass and save your life. But die, okay? I hope you both get the coronavirus. I hope you both die a long, painful death. That's one of your public school teachers right there. That's a comment from one of your public school teachers. The students agreed they shouldn't have been out. Why did they agree they shouldn't have been out? You should have been out. You should have been out enjoying life, having a good time. And they went home afterwards. But were shocked by the teacher's words. When she said that, I was shocked, said Steinhardt, a uh, student. I didn't, know who, I didn't know someone would say something like that, especially a teacher. She should be smarter with her words. She's brainwashed. So are you. You decided, you agreed that you shouldn't have been out, so you went home, and you were shocked that somebody else was as brainwashed as you are. 
the Trentonian reports that this isn't the first time Griggs wished death upon people for not following social distancing orders. They uncovered an April 6th post on Facebook by a woman named Nikki Lay, which appears to be an alias for Griggs. And she said, We're surrounded by idiots. Rode our bikes to Coozer Park this afternoon. And what uh, what do we see but a younger couple with their daughter, maybe two to three years old, undoing the caution tape around them, uh, around the jungle gym, so they could slide. I totally called them out on it. I wished illness on them and commented that it was scary to even think they were parents. Oh, this woman must just be so golden. <laughs> 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 the parents' response was, we're going to put the tape back, don't worry. <clears throat> oh, man, I, I tell you, I, I don't even know. You're, you're actually sending your kids to these public schools and and, and with, with people that think that way because she is not an isolated uh, thinker that way. She is not. All right. Now... Some, as I said a little bit earlier, that they, they're going to uh, incrementally allow people to leave their homes a little bit at a time. We're going to allow you to leave your homes. You don't have the right to leave your homes, but we're going to allow you to. Aren't we kind? Aren't we nice? <laughs> From the metro.co.uk. K. Small bubbles of friends and family could be allowed to meet again soon. Small bubbles of friends and family could be allowed to meet again. Oh, how nice you are. The UK could be moving towards easing lockdown restrictions to allow people to meet a small number of family and friends outside of their household to ease loneliness and isolation. Nicholas Sturgeon has discussed the scheme in which a couple people could meet a small bubble of others outside their own households. Thank you, Massa. Thank you. Some countries are beginning to look at the expanding definition of households to allow small gathering of people, she said. The First Minister told BBC Radio Scotland's Good Morning Scotland uh, program it would have to be the same group of people each time. So you can be allowed to meet a small bubble of people, but... Only the people you meet in that bubble the first time can meet you there, Consequent, uh, subsequent times. But, she stressed, no decisions have been made on such a bubble arrangement. But she wants to have an open conversation with the public about the way forward. The way forward. How can we control you and make you think you're free? How can we keep our thumb on your head and make you think you're free. A Downing Street spokesman later said, uh, confirmed the UK still plans to adopt a four nations approach to ease the lockdown measures, revealing her framework for relaxing, relaxing, lengthening your leash, uh, loosening the chains around your neck just ever so slightly. So in Scotland, Ms. Sturgeon said some of the restrictions could stay in place until at least the end of the year. The end of the year! <laughs> Seven months! At least the end of the year! <laughs> but, but, there may be hope for people who have experienced feelings of isolation and loneliness. Ms. Sturgeon said, I know from my own parents who are not seeing their grandkids just now, I understand, I understand the anguish of that. We're all missing seeing our loved ones, so we all want to get beyond that as quickly as possible. I personally am not um, missing seeing anybody. <laughs> 
but but I know I'm an odd human. <laughs> I'm not like 99.7, I don't know how many, percent of the people. That's a good stat, though. I just made it up, but you could use it. Every country is going through these decisions. <laughs> All right, whatever. Enough, enough. Give me a little more leash, please, Massa. Please, Massa, don't whip me quite as hard. Uh, well, that's her. Bill Gates has a different point of view. <laughs> Bill Gates says, as things get back to semi-normal, it's impossible to overstate the pain that lies in the years ahead. So he can't overstate the pain. The pain on you will be so great for years to come. And you're not never going to get back to normal. Maybe semi-normal, whatever that means. That's Bill Gates, co-founder and co-chair of the Gates Foundation, sharing his latest thoughts on the corona pandemic in, a, in an 11-page memo. Corona side! I have another article on that, but not for today. Um, <laughs> the good news, he said, is that we can look forward to a semi-normal world over the next two months. People can go out, but not as often, and not to crowded places. Oh, thank you, Massa. <laughs> Massa Billy. All right. Not, not as often and not to crowded places. Gates wrote, picture restaurants that only seat people at every other table. And airplanes where every middle seat is empty. He believes schools will reopen, but stadiums won't. The basic principle should be allowed uh, be to be be to allow activities that have a large benefit to the economy or human welfare, but pose a small risk of infection until he forces that vaccine in your veins. No, you cannot have another. You can't eat your meat. Wait, you can't have any pudding until you eat your meat. Oh, God. Yeah. So, in a separate piece uh, penned for The Economist, the tech billionaire said that when historians write the book on the pandemic, what we lived through so far will only take up the first third. The bulk of the story uh, will be what happens next, he wrote. Even if governments lift shelter-in-place orders and businesses reopen their doors, humans, you will have a natural aversion to exposing yourself to dis-ease. Airports won't have large crowds. Then they won't stay open because they'll all go bankrupt. Sports will be played in basically empty stadiums. They too will go bankrupt. And the world economy will be depressed because demand will stay low. Think Weimar. He said life will only return to normal when most of the population has his poison a vaccine in your veins. And that could take a while, although he hopes that one will be in mass production by the second half of next year. <laughs> the second half of next year. If that's the case, it will be a history-making achievement, and the fast humankind has ever gone from recognizing a new disease to immunizing against it, Gates wrote. The global corona tally rose to 26.5 million. What? What What did it do? The gro global corona tally Rose to 26.5 million on Thursday. Tally of what? Oh, okay. I guess that's infected, which, of course, 
we know that most of that's made up, with 184,643 deaths, again, a massively inflated number. Massively. As they're assigning people that die from jumping out of airplanes without parachutes as corona. <laughs> At least 721,531 have recovered, according to Johns Hopkins, which is at the center of this huge lie, this huge propaganda hoax. The United States has the highest case toll in the world at 842,624, as well as the highest death count at 46,785. Which I think they said it's like 55,000 now or whatever. I don't know. Um, Three million cases worldwide. No, it says Tupelo. This was this was from earlier this week. Uh, and it's talking about last Thursday at 2.65 million. So, what did I say? Did I say more than that? <laughs> I don't know. All right, folks. Well, just uh, uh, hopefully this has been of, of some use to you. Uh, hopefully you can see uh, the the, um, the um, direction things are going uh, and how much like we are like the old Weimar here in this country. Uh, probably in many places around the world, too. I don't know about them. I, I really don't. Um, but that's something to, to kind of, I mean, give you kind of a, a guide going forward to plan out uh, for for when the barter economy does roll in after the hyperinflation. Uh, it, it's, it's something for you to think about because y'all got skills. Y'all got skills of some sort or another, uh, and, 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 and you're going to be, be able to use those skills to barter with. If and when... Yes, the old same new normal. Exactly, Vinny. <laughs> all right. All right, that's kind of I'm going to wrap it up with that. Thank you all for tuning in here on episode 69 of the Grim Leftovers. Sorry about the little technical glitch at the beginning, but hey, it's live radio. Sometimes stuff happens. Uh, I'll be back again next week with episode 70. Tomorrow is in a perfect world with Flash and somebody. Maybe somebody, maybe not. Um, check out the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows coming up throughout the week. Stay away from people! <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Peace!